Good evening. My name is Carl Sadkoff, and tonight I'm going to be discussing the topic of marine conservation. I would like to welcome my panelist, Ms. Lisa Gregg, who is the Policy and Program Manager for the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Spike 
and the number of mullet available to fishermen, a spike in the mullet population. The net ban legislation was put into effect for two main reasons, competition and bycatch. Now here's what I mean by competition. Many marine species, commercial fishermen and recreational fishermen, were all competing for the same fish in the same waters, taking them out by the millions each year. There was just too much competition for a fish at the bottom of the food chain. The other problem is bycatch, which is the entanglement or catch of a species other than the one intended, and poses a major problem for gill nets. The Florida fish and marine wildlife species and populations are so diverse that gill nets are just not plausible. Too many animals can be affected, like sharks, dolphins, endangered and threatened species of turtles, other non-targeted species of fish, and sometimes even seabirds. Ms. Karen Wallace, a president and senior scientist for the Coastal Conservation Consultants, said that only one in 1,000 sea turtles make it to adulthood, and that the main threats are human-induced. With this rate of survival, these strict conservation efforts are completely necessary. Tighter regulations are also needed for many species of game fish as well. Just recently here in the state of Florida, the population of spotted sea trout have declined. The FWC has recognized this and are now enacting new regulations going into effect this year to help the population rebound. The FWC must regulate with these bans and limits and must also ensure a sustainable ecosystem. I interviewed Mr. Mike Norberg, who is a regional biologist for the FWC's Marine Fisheries Department. Mr. Norberg said, the FWC is very good at taking public input on these rules and regulations. But he said it all comes down to one thing, sustainability. He said that sustainability is the overarching goal. Sustainability ensures that fish are here for future generations. It also provides more bait and healthier fish and in turn, more revenue for the fishing industry. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, or FWC, is an organization that monitors and works hard to ensure a healthy and sustainable ecosystem. And they have worked with programs to help the fishing industry, like the Artificial Reef Program, which creates prime deep water habitat for many species of marine life. But these reefs are not just for the fish. They also serve purposes for humans as well like providing socioeconomic benefits to communities, reducing user conflict, and increasing charter business in the area. Improving habitats is just one of the ways that Florida's marine regulatory agencies works to improve our many fishing communities. Another organization is Coastal Conservation Association, or CCA, which mainly focuses on inshore game fish, like red drum. One subdivision that they have called the CCA Star is dedicated to tagging these fish and promoting good catch and release habits among recreational fishermen. Just recently, the FWC, CCA, and Duke Energy teamed up to release 16,000 juvenile red drum into the wild stock from Pasco to Collier Counties. With the previously mentioned organizations, Florida has what's called a force multiplier, which is public and private organizations working together to help our ecosystem. And on this track, Florida's ecosystems will continue to thrive. Other states must consider Florida's regulations to help their own oceans and migrating wildlife. Here in the United States, fishing industry regulations are just not consistent. For example, gillnets are illegal in Florida and Louisiana, but are still legal in a more lax state like Mississippi. Florida's consistent enforcement of sound marine regulations will maximally benefit the marine ecosystems of other states, even if they lack similar regulations. Many fish don't know a state line, and they move from state to state freely. Many species migrate hundreds, even thousands of miles each year. Additionally, all states don't have the same regulations for these same species. <laughs> Dolphin fish tag in the Florida Keys were shown to migrate up to the waters off of Virginia and New Jersey and back down to Florida. There's a minimum size limit on these fish in Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina, but not in North Carolina. This lack of consistency among states 
may ultimately lead to a decline in returning schools of fish to other states, damaging their fishing industries. A school of dolphin fish may migrate out of the Atlantic coast, but only a small portion of that school may be left to return. Many other non-migratory species stay in what's called a home range, which is a general area of the ocean where they may reside. If a school of fish's home range is on a state border, they might be killed or injured by legal fishing methods in one state, whereas that same type of fishing methods may be different in the neighboring state. Each state has different populations of fish, and some have different kinds of fish, but we must enforce the same or similar regulations among these Gulf and Atlantic coastal states. Banning many other kinds of fishing is just unreasonable. But states have to enforce consistent regulations on the fishing industry to help species like the dolphin fish and other marine life fundamental to our ocean's ecosystems. Florida's common sense regulations and consistent enforcement are examples other states must follow to protect our environment, biblically steward God's creation, and provide this resource for future generations. Because future generations will depend on sustainable resources. And our oceans are the biggest resource we have. God has loaned us this earth, and we must take care of it. If we don't sensibly regulate our oceans, we're doing God a disservice. Psalms 24, 1 through 2 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. If God has founded the earth upon our oceans, then we must take care of them, even if it is costly. We are entrusted with the earth and our oceans, and they should be our top priority when it comes to conservation efforts. Our country is currently making big strides in conservation efforts, but we still have a ways to go. Some of our most valuable species of game fish and marine life are declining in population. And if this trend continues, our oceans and eventually our economy will fall. Once we have consistent regulations among our Gulf and Atlantic coastal states, we will see a rise in marine life populations, healthier water, and an overall better ecosystem. However, if we do not take these precautions to safeguard our ecosystem, we will continue to see populations decline, and some species may even reach threatened or extinct status. Conservation is the only way to save our oceans. And I plead to all fishermen and to the general public, when voting on or making conservation decisions, don't just think of now. Think of years from now, because those later years are when we will really see the effects of our decisions today. Thank you. Thank you, Collins. Very nice presentation. So, you're of the opinion that all states should have the same regulations? Uh, what about states where they have what's called uh, spawning aggregations, where fish will um, will group together when they spawn? Um, do you feel that states that have those spawning aggregations should employ more stricter regulations than other states that do not have them? Yes, I don't think so. I mean, because that makes those fish so vulnerable when they're grouped together in that big group. And I think that strict regulations are going to benefit ecosystems anywhere, uh, whether it's here in Florida or uh, anywhere along our Gulf and Atlantic coast. Okay, so, so you feel that, um, so you don't feel that this regulation should necessarily be the same for all states, but maybe very based on the fish and their activities within those states' waters. I think that in times where, where fish are spawning, just being a fisherman and, and kind of seeing some of the stuff firsthand in fresh water and salt water, um, I think that, that here in Florida, I think general regulations must apply for the same species in all other Gulf and Atlantic coastal states. I think there can be some exceptions made um, for, when, for when those fish are vulnerable. 